On today's Fast Friday, one of these photos was taken at a wide open aperture of f2.8. The other photo was taken at f11, but had artificial intelligence applied to it. Can you tell which one is which? Any guesses? Anyone? We'll get into it right after this. Hi everyone and welcome to pal to tech Luminar is a photo editor that's really taking the lead in using artificial intelligence effects to help edit your photos. Artificial intelligence is the direction that Apple, Samsung, and other electronics manufacturers are headed with their cameras and their apps. Now with their latest release, Luminar has added what they call portrait bokeh. Well, I happen to have a couple of high quality lenses laying around the studio, so let's see if it's as good as they're saying it is. Okay. So here's my first photo taken at f11 at 56 millimeters using the 50 to 140 millimeter zoom lens. And because I have a small aperture, the background is going to be more in focus. There's going to be less bokeh. And just for reference, here's the exact same shot I took with this lens at f2.8. Both of these shots are unedited and were taken with this lens. The photo on the left is at f2.8. The photo on the right is f11. And as you can see, the subject is more isolated in in the background in the photo on the left that was shot with a wide open aperture of f2.8. So now I'm going to pretend that this lens cannot go any wider than f11. Let's open up the photo that was taken at f11 in Luminar AI. The portrait book of feature is right here. And if you click on it, you've got some options. Now I'm not going to go through all these options. This is not a tutorial on how to use Luminar AI. However, I do want to show you what it looks like with the effect applied. So basically what you do is increase the amount slider just like like this right here. You also get a brush if you hover your mouse over, see, just like that. And you can fine tune adjustments by using this brush just like this if you want to. Or you can click on defocus and remove adjustments just like that. Really the most significant two sliders here are the amount that you want to apply and the depth correction. What the depth correction slider does is bring the background closer to the foreground subject. Check this out. But watch what happens when I bring it all the way down here. Here are both of them together. The photo on the left was shot at f2.8. The photo on the right was shot at f11, but with the portrait bokeh applied. Now, in some cases, the AI will not work at all on the photo, particularly if it doesn't recognize that it's a portrait. Look at this shot right here. The slider is not even lit up. It's not even active. So if I try and move the slider, it's not working. Let's see what it does now to this shot right here of a St. Louis Cardinals player that I took at F10. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and apply it here, starting with about 50. I'll bring it up a little more. Okay, so here they are side by side. Photo on the left is before I did any processing. Photo on the right was run through Luminar AI. And it did a very good job of subject isolation. No doubt about that. You can see right here is when it kicks in. You see that? But I have to say I am very impressed with the job that it did on this shot right here. Let's look at another shot now that was taken with the Fujifilm 56 millimeter lens at f2.5. So yes, it was a wide open aperture. However, she is sitting so close to the foliage behind her. You see that? Let's see if we can fix this using artificial intelligence. Okay, here we go, bringing it up. Okay, here they are side by side. Photo on the left was the original photo on the right was processed through Luminar AI. And yeah, there is an area here that got cut off. Now switching back to Luminar, I certainly could have adjusted this and go over the area that was the problem just like this. And that brings the hair back, you see that? Let's see what it does to this image here with a lot of subjects kind of at different distances. Interesting, it shows these three figures, but not this lady right here, or these two people right here. It kind of got a little confused, right? <laughs> Still, obviously, this is meant for portraits of a single individual. Let's try one more. Here's a shot with the Fujifilm 56 millimeter lens at F11. Here it is off, and here it is on. So let's have a look at the photos I showed you at the very beginning of this video, and I will tell you which one has the correct real bokeh. Here's what we started out with. This shot was taken once again at F11. Okay, so here they are side by side. Which one was taken with this lens at F2.8, and which one was the F11 version, right, that was run through Luminar AI? Have a look at them. Take a good look. 
Which one is the real bokeh? The photo on the left or the photo on the right? The answer is the photo on the left. That is the one that was not processed and taken at f2.8. The other one was run through Luminar AI. This is pretty interesting stuff. So what does this actually tell us? Well, first, it is wonderful that desktop software is now starting to incorporate more of the advanced features that are normally found in smartphones. And I think for more casual shots or shots with subjects more in the distance, like that baseball shot that I showed you, it's a great feature to have. Will it replace professional portrait photography, right? Using these lenses? Absolutely not. Hell no, not even close. But being able to go and fix photos that you took with lenses that were say stopped down with really small apertures with not such great background and busy things going on behind the subject, this is a great piece of software to use and I'm very impressed by what they did. Was it perfect? Not even close. Could I have spent more time editing and tweaking it? Absolutely, right? Or you could use a professional high quality lens, right? And you are going to get much better bokeh with a background of a lens like this. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. Have a wonderful weekend. I'm gonna be signing off now, but I will see all of you in another video next week. Take care.